Talking Tide right here at the Voice of College Football, courtesy Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. Also his show right here on YouTube, in my own words, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6.30 Central. Stephen, what's going on today? Doing good, Mark. Can I complain here? Crimson Tide getting the win over Texas A&M to uh, take control of that SEC West. And now they got a homecoming coming up here against Arkansas. So all eyes continue to be on Jalen Milrow, who turned in a pretty stellar uh, passing game with three touchdowns. He did throw a pick 321 yards through the air as we have kind of uh, tracked his progress with you through the game. Uh, each week, it seems as though Alabama is honing in on what they need to do with him and and, and utilize his uh, talents in the best way. They've taken strides, Mark, with each week. Uh, Jalen Milrow, individually, area, in my opinion, Mark, the biggest area Milrow has grown in uh, uh, has been uh, the, the ability to uh, win with his arm. And that was the biggest question, Mark, going into the A&M game, was if there was a moment where Alabama would not be able to run the ball consistently the way it would like to, could it put the game in the hands of Milrow, and could he win it with his arm? And we saw that, made several deep ball passes, accurate in that regard, short to intermediate, was strong, uh, set career highs, and completion percentage, well, completion passes completed with 21, career high for passing yards, 321, had three touchdowns, really developed the connection there with Jermaine Burton and Isaiah Bond. So he checked the big box here on last week, and that was, could Milro win a game with his arm in a hostile environment? And that answer was a resounding yes. But we're starting to see both he and Tommy Reese sort of grow together and starting to round in the form at the same time properly. You saw Tommy Reese dive into his bag a little bit, executing those slant routes, calling those out, just displaying you know, different things in the play calling to show that not only – is Jalen growing as a complete quarterback, but I'm starting to find myself as the complete game planner, the complete game caller here. So a, a good showing there from not just Milrow, but Tommy Reese as well. Uh, staying with the offense, Stephen, any road win in the SEC is a good one, especially when you're down a touchdown to start the third quarter. And uh, Texas A&M obviously brings a stout defense, but you did mention not being able to establish the run uh, again, the defense, there has to be some respect given to the Aggies, but still uh, the Tide looking for a more consistent ground game. Absolutely, and, and that starts with just more consistency from uh, the guys up front on the offensive line. Uh, continuing to get better with each week, but wanting to have that game where you can line up and just run when you want to. And that's going to be the focus here against Arkansas. Sam Pittman, K.J. Jefferson, the Hogs, they come into to Bryant Denny. And, and, of course, the big thing for Coach Saban is having that balance. Yes, it's great to be able to throw the football, have confidence in the passing game. You're seeing the growth there of Jalen Milrow manipulating that pocket. And that's awesome. And we don't want to take that for granted. Absolutely not. But you also want to have that balance in running the football in between the tackles, bouncing runs off outside when you need to, and having that, that offensive line that can impose its will. This was a group that in the offseason, that's what Tyler Booker, that's what J.C. Latham, that's what Seth McLaughlin, they talked about. We want to impose our will. And there have been moments this season where Alabama has been able to run the football better but there also have been moments where you look at this offensive line and you go, you know, where are where's the effort in pushing a lot of these guys off of the football? Now Saban also didn't mention after the postgame presser, he knew how tough it was going to be to run on a and He knew this. They, they expressed this going into the game plan. And that was probably one of the reasons why the prep was more so for Jalen Milrow to do more things with his arm. But this week, when you have an Arkansas team, uh, you got to get back to fine tuning that Russian attack because uh, when you discuss MSU down the road and Tennessee down the road, of course, Auburn down the road, and should you make the SEC championship, Georgia down the road, you got to be able to have that balance. And it starts with being able to run the football. 
And as we flip to the other side of the line of scrimmage, uh, on the positive note concerning the rushing game was obviously the defense uh, held Le'Veon Moss to under 50 yards rushing. So the, the rush defense came in strong. It did. And ever since the South Florida game, Mark, this defense in the second half of games, you got to give Kevin Steele a lot of kudos. In the second half of games, you hold a lane chip and offense to three points. You hold Mississippi State to what seven in the second half. You hold a Jimbo, you know, you hold a Jimbo Fisher, Bobby Petrino offense to three in the second half. So this Alabama defense in the second half of games, Kevin Steele has been coaching gems out there, and a, a defense that's not just you know stopping the run mark, but getting after the quarterback, and in particular the defensive line. Since the South Florida game, Alabama's defensive line, we're talking six and a half sacks, six and a half tackles for loss, several quarterback hurries. They're attacking the quarterback with the interior defensive line front, and it's allowed Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell and Deontay Lawson to have marquee success and the secondary to have success also. So Kevin Steele, uh, Travaris Robinson, Freddie Roach, these guys on the defensive staff, the second half of games have been doing a bang up job. Stephen M. Smith touchdown Alabama breaking things down. Ty takes on the Hogs of Arkansas at noon Eastern time, eleven Central on ESPN. Uh, in my own words, that's the show you need to check out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's right here on YouTube, starring Stephen M. Smith, eleven or six thirty Central time. So, Stephen, when we look at this Arkansas deal. Uh, it's, it's going south. However, they continue to compete in close games. Uh, they, they stayed within a score of Ole Miss. They, they were within shouting distance the entire time. Same thing with Texas A&M, although I think they were dominated a little bit more by the Aggies, but stayed within striking distance for most of the game. But, um, sticking with the Alabama defense, uh, the, the formidable duo there is Rocket Sanders, who's gotten healthy. He's back in rhythm to a certain extent. And KJ Jefferson, who's one of the best dual threat quarterbacks and who no safety wants to see with a head of steam in the secondary, uh, coming his way. But it's uh, more about the offensive line for Arkansas. I have an issues, but, uh, you know, uh, run down the, the, uh, matchup here. It's going to be interesting, Mark, because the biggest thing you just mentioned, uh, Sanders against this Alabama defensive front. Sanders, Raheem Sanders has had success in the past against Alabama's defensive front, ripping off you know, chunk yards gains there. So this is a big matchup for Jaheim Otis, for uh, for Jamaria Latham, for Justin Boyd, BTM Keenan, those guys to have gap integrity have gap integrity against the run, but not just the defensive line, uh, the linebackers as well. Deontay Lawson, uh, Tresman Marshall, Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner, having that gap integrity there. And then the secondary coming down to help out and run support because Sanders is a guy that's patient and is running, runs low, runs strong behind the pads, but does have the speed to bounce plays out, to break tackles, a strong contact balance there. And when you look at K.J. Jefferson, strong to bring down himself in terms of those design quarterback runs, you have to come after him as well, but contain the edge. I think the biggest thing for Alabama's defense this week is being able to contain the edge. We've seen it time so far this season, Bama can lose that gap contained, and whether it's a quarterback being able to get some yards there or running backs getting some yards there, somebody loses contain on the outside and big plays tend to happen. So for Alabama this week, especially against an Arkansas team that does play physical, that does play seven, that scrappy, that, that fits the mold there of Coach Pittman uh, for Alabama, it's having that gap sound integrity this week. Stephen, how do we stand on the injury front? Well, injury right now, Mark, we had, Bama had a couple of guys that got nicked up there against Texas A&M. Uh, the leader in the secondary, Malachi Moore, went down with a twisted ankle, had to be helped off the field. Uh, he's okay. He's listed here as day-to-day. -day. We'll see how he continues to progress in today's practice. And on Wednesday, uh, knowing Malachi, he's a hard-nosed competitor. He's going to push himself to go against Arkansas. If he does not, then uh, Earl Little, uh, Earl Little II, former four-star who came in the 2022 class, Earl Little, 
who had a really good spring, uh, has been progressing here since then. He is the immediate backup at that star position behind Malachi. So if you don't see more, you will see uh, the redshirt freshman Earl Little. In terms of the in terms of special teams, James Burnup went down there with a, with a pulled muscle in his leg. Uh, Coach Saban said nothing serious. He's fine. But I, I expect Burnup to go against Arkansas. If there's an issue still there with his leg, which I don't see it, but if there is, uh, Will Reichert showed that he's perfectly capable of doing double duty. He did that against the Aggies, but also – Bama's got Connor Talty, a uh, three-star, who can punt as well. And then you have Darian Dalcourt, who did not play at all against the Aggies due to a shoulder injury he sustained throughout the week of practice. Uh, Jaden Roberts, former four-star, who came to the 2021 class, by the way, of Houston, Texas, he played a lot at that left guard spot against the Aggies. He actually did a pretty solid job there. So if Dalcourt doesn't go this week, you will have Jaden Roberts. But I fully see Dalcourt, Malachi Moore, and James Byrne upset to go this week. There it is, folks. Uh, Alabama, Arkansas for another time uh, every year since Arkansas joined the SEC in 1992. Of course, that will end at some point as uh, the schedules get mixed up with the addition of Texas and Oklahoma. Also keep in mind that the Tide took control of the SEC Western Division with a win over Texas A&M, but they've got a date with LSU. They still control their own destiny as well. Stephen, we always appreciate you stopping by and want to encourage everyone to stop by Stephen's show Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here on a YouTube, in my own words, 630 Central. Stephen, good to see you. Enjoy the game on Saturday. Appreciate it, Mark. Thank you.